to go back, ladies and gentlemen, and review, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you have a graph that's in y equals mx plus b form or not in y equals mx plus b form, I believe when solving systems, it's easiest to graph it out of this form. So we have to make sure we remember how to graph, all right? Um, especially when it's in slope-intercept form. So first of all, we need to remember what slope-intercept form is. y equals mx plus b, right? Where b is your y-intercept. What is your y-intercept? That's where the graph crosses the y-axis, right? And it crosses at the point 0 comma b, all right? m is your slope, right? That's going to be kind of like your inclination of your line. It's going to be your, um, your slope. That's going to tell you kind of like the rate of change of your y values over your x values. Sometimes we also like to say it's your rise over your run, but it's really just the change in, in the ratio between your y values and x values. So we'll go over that in a second. So let's look at the first one. The first one has a y-intercept of 6, right? Well, we write it as a coordinate point of 0, 6. So what Madison will do is she'll go up 6 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And she puts a point there, 0, 6, plus 6. 0, 6, 6. 0, 6, 6. 0, 6, 6. Do you guys see the relationship? Yeah. relationship? OK. Then the next thing it says is the slope, right? The slope is negative 3. Well, I told you the slope is a ratio between the change in y over the change in x. So first of all, negative 3 is not a ratio. That's just a whole number, right? So what I need to do is I need to write it as a fraction, which we'll write as negative 3 over 1. Because negative 3 divided by 1 is negative 3, right? However, now it's in ratio form, so what I can do is go down three units, one, two, three, to the right one. The change in y is down three over one. You could also go up three to the left one. Either way, you've now just created a line, All right? OK, so now the next thing is we need to graph this one. So first, we find the y-intercept, which is at negative four. One, two, three, four. And we write it in there. Negative 4, negative 4. 0, negative 4, negative 4. 0, negative 4, negative 4. Notice it? Here, my slope is 2, which I'm going to write as 2 over 1. So that means I go up 2 to the right 1. Up 2 to the right 1. Connect my points. Now we can see that they do intersect. And I would just want to double check, make sure I go down 3, 1, 2, um, 3 over 1. We're at 6, 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, over 1. OK, so it doesn't really look like uh, my graph should actually be crossing right there. OK, so my graph's a little bit wrong. That should be if I go down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, or sorry, down 1, 2, 3, over 1, down 1, 2, 3, over 1. So it should be crossing at 2. Okay. So sorry, my graph's a little bit wrong. That's why we have grid paper. This one goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. OK, so you can see now the intersection is at 2 comma 0, which we'll call our solution. OK? So this is consistent because there is a solution, right? And since, again, there's only one solution, it's going to be independent. And there you go. That's it. I should have done the what? Do you want to do anything about like, the negative 2, I mean, the negative 2 yet? Yeah. Well, the negative 3, we just write, write as our slope. And that just tells us how we're going to, what is our um, kind of the change between our points. And that's going to tell us either down 3 over 1 or up 3 to the left one. OK? Yes? What if y equals x? What if y equals x? 